Okay. We have car owner Gene Haas with us, and uh, he's a car owner over there with the number 14 Code 3 so Associate Mobile One Chevrolet at Stuart Haas Racing. And Gene, congratulations. Uh, I know you've had a lot of wins in your in your storied uh, racing career, but this has to be uh, one that ranks right up there with Tony Stewart uh, winning here at Sonoma. Talk about the thrill uh, of this victory here today. Well, uh, you know, I think uh, when that last, last uh, caution came out, I, I know that uh, uh, the pit strategy was to come in a few laps earlier because there's always a, a caution uh, somewhere in the last, uh, you know, 20 or 30 laps. So uh, they were saying, well, he, I think he was running 22nd at the time, and it was like, well, we're not going to do anything back here. So the idea was. Go ahead, it's on. Is it on? Yeah, what's up? It's not. Okay. Um, no. So, no, 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 no. I, think, I think this little thing came unplugged. Okay. That's not on. Yeah. All right. Is that, that better? Okay, yeah, yeah it just unplugged. <laughs> and this is falling apart. Okay. Uh, so, you know, when I heard him discussing that strategy, it was kind of like, a, you know, like, like Tony was saying, well, you know, what do we got to lose here? And uh, uh, might as well go for it. So they said, okay, we'll pit this lap. And I think that was like with 25 laps to go. And um, um, so they came in, they got tires, and then immediately, I think within a lap, uh, the caution came out. So that was that was that left uh, you know Tony was going to be up, be up front when everybody else came in to get their tires, and his tires only had like uh, two laps on them. So that was a you know those are the, the kind of strategies that you just can't uh, you know, make happen. They just you just have to be lucky, and uh, uh, so luck luck was on our side today, and that put Tony out front. So once the caution was over, I think we restarted like uh, with uh, around 22 laps to go. 22 laps is a long time here at, at, you know, at Sonoma, we know that. And uh, you know, the tires wear out. After about 10 laps, you're, you're off a second and a half on the laps. So uh, you know, anything can happen. Uh, watching the restart, uh, you know, Tony uh, you know, got away. He was uh, you know, getting a little bit of a lead there. But uh, uh, you know, right, right, right behind him was uh, uh, the 78 car, and behind him was the 11 and the 18, and so on and so forth. And you knew, you know that the, 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 the cars in back are going to try to catch Tony. So what they end up doing is they end up dr overdriving a little bit because that's what you have to do. So you wind up, you know, burning up your tires a little bit. And I think Tony knows that. So he's going to drive as, as hard as he can <coughs> to do that. So a little bit of strategy there, I think, on, on Tony's part to know he has to maintain that lead and also make the competitors behind him uh, use up their tires trying to catch him. So, you know, you know, if you watch him carefully, you can see how he goes into the turns and, and uh, you know, kind of gives him a little bit of room and then, uh, you know, moves out in front of him and, and uh, it basically makes them uh, use up their tires and, and, and that really worked well. Then he started to pull ahead. So uh, with about 10 laps to go, I started thinking that, you know, now everybody's tires are dropping off. Uh, the, the, the drivers behind him, their tires are a little bit used up. So, you know, now he has a better chance of, 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 of pulling ahead. But, you know, like anything else, his, his tires were like three laps older. So. Here we come. We're getting down to you know the last five laps or so, and then then they start to catch him. So now all of a sudden, the worry goes to how much better are their tires than than uh, uh, Tony's tires. And uh, I think, uh, and as you saw the race unwind, uh, Tony uh, basically you know he was running out of tires. Uh, uh, Denny Hamlin uh, was was a little bit better. Uh, uh, Martin Truex had burned up his tires, and uh, I think you know obviously. Denny Hamlin and Tony Stewart are, are great drivers. They drove it hard in the last few turns, and uh, you know Denny Hamlin came out ahead. And, and but you know, in, in, the to, in a true Tony Stewart fashion, he uh, uh, you just know when he came into turn 11, he, he wasn't going to use his brakes. He was going he whatever was in front of him was going to either get punted off the track or, or run over or whatever. Uh, that was, <coughs> that was going to be his bumper stop. And uh, but actually, you know, when you watched it, he did a great, masterful job. He, he slid around. He got in the inside. He, I think, Denny overdrove it. A little bit of a mistake. Uh, and the result was that Tony won the race, which I, I think is an incredibly exciting race. And uh, I think everybody at uh, uh, Stewart Haas Racing is very proud of him. And and you know, we have to thank that 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 uh, winning strategy of, of bringing Tony in with like 25 laps to go. So that was probably the key today. Thank you, Gene. And let's hear from our winning crew chief, 
And that's Mike Bugaravich. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate on, it. On this win today. And uh, maybe just talk about, uh, Gene alluded to, uh, you know, to win a race like this, sometimes you have to, uh, you have to make some decisions, uh, some gut decisions. And talk about your decision there, as, as Gene mentioned, uh, to come in and pit a little earlier than everybody else. And then as, as, as the laps were going, uh, what was racing through your mind as, uh, before the, uh, the final lap there? Yeah, I mean, early in the race, you know, we were running fairly well and uh, basically pitting according to the strategy we laid out the night before. And then we kind of lost some track position there on pit road. And, and it's tough to pass, you know. Um, people get strung out and it makes it difficult. So as we were running there, noticing we're not passing people, we were still going to be a lap short on fuel unless we saved, which we had that in our plan. But at the end of the day, we weren't going to have an opportunity to win just doing what everybody else did. So we had to take a, a chance here and, um, and, and pit early in hopes that we would get a caution and you know we heard nascar talking about the debris a little bit so you know at that point it's 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 about winning this year you know what i mean especially for us in the situation we're in so um we had to take a chance and and it could have worked out you know not in favor of us and we could have lost points today but instead it worked out and uh and i'm thankful for that we'll take questions now for either gene or mike if you have one raise your hand we'll start right here with lee then we'll go to bob and then the gentleman there and then to isabel Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. First of all, for Bugo, did you have an opportunity to ask him if he's having fun now? Because it's, you know, th this, it, it has not been a lot of fun for Tony the last couple of years. And if both of you can kind of address that, you know, how do you make it fun for him for the remaining time that he has left? Because clearly it's not as fun as it once was for Stuart. <laughs> I did not remember to ask him that. I just assumed by the look on his face that he was enjoying it. Um, but, you know, one thing I will say, no matter what, every week, it's the last thing I say to him before I leave the car, you know. And, and he actually reminded me of that today. He said, if I get angry and start yelling at you today, just remind me to have fun. I said, yeah, I know how that will work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, we, we always talk about that. I mean, what, what's most important, I mean, for all of us is just enjoy it, take it in. You know, you have to do that. Well, you know, uh, racing's a, a, a tough sport. Uh, you know, uh, 40, uh, 39 of the competitors go home losers, and you know we're we're on the we're on that side most of the time. So we all know what it's like to to uh, you know, okay, you just kind of hang your head, you you pack up your equipment, and you head home, and that's a you know I think every every racer realizes that's just that's just part of the sport. And most of us, that's what we do every weekend is we go home losers, okay. and that once in a blue moon when you do win a race. Uh, it's phenomenal. Like I can't remember the last time we, we won here, but it, it it just happens so seldom. And uh, uh, when it does happen, it's 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 very addictive. It it, it, it makes you feel renewed. And, and I know from Tony's standpoint, I, I'm sure this is a great motivator. It uh, you know Tony knows that when he gets out in front, that he has the ability to to compete with anybody. He's you know one of the greatest racers of, of NASCAR of all time. He's smooth. He doesn't make mistakes. He's fast. And uh, you know you haven't seen that in a few years, and that, that I'm sure that that grates on him. But this is just a vindication that you know he has a natural talent, and that talent is something that um, it, it's still it's still there. You can see it, and I think I think he feels great, and I hope this day lasts for the rest of the year. Let's go over here to Bob, and then we'll go to the gentleman there, to Isabel, and then we'll go upstairs. You know, this is this is a big win. I, I guess I compare it to you know Jeff Gordon when he he won a race and got into the chase. I I think it's a uh, great for the sport. It's great for the fans. It it brings excitement to the sport. I I, I can't I can't think of any any negatives whatsoever. And uh, uh, you know, last year we, we we lost this championship by half a second, and that was a very very difficult uh, pill to swallow. And uh, you know, I think if if we could have three. Uh, cars, uh, you know, in the chase now, I, I, that would be phenomenal. And, uh, you know, we will do everything we can to, you know, correct the errors of last year. Go ahead, sir. Uh, <clears throat> about the timing of the, of the uh, pit stop, Bill Sesseff with the Napa Valley Register. Did you know there was already debris? Did you, did you figure out that they were going to call the caution, or was it just by luck that it happened when it did? 
uh, we heard them talking about it, but we didn't know for sure if they'd throw it or not. Um, kind of just assumed with a rag lane on the track earlier and they threw a caution, I figured, well, if there's anything similar to a rag or larger, they're going to throw the caution again. So, I, I mean, again, it was just a, a chance that we took. Um, chance to get a win. You know, I mean, running 17th, finishing 17th wasn't really going to do us much good, so we had to try something. Let's go over here to Isabel, and then we'll go upstairs. Go ahead. Isabel Gonzalez, ESPN Albuquerque. How often does gambling pay off, and how sure were you that it was going to actually work out today? Not sure at all. <laughs> um, again, I think I think almost every race that's won here basically on a strategy deal is, is just a lucky call by anybody. Um, you know, if if it's a 10-lap shootout and everybody has tires, you know, then the, then the best guy earns it. But when, when it comes down to something like happened today, you know, I just, I just was fortunate. Let's go upstairs. Go ahead for questions for Gene or Mike. No questions. Okay. We'll come back downstairs. We'll take the gentleman here. We'll go to Dominic and then the gentleman to the left. Hey, Mike. Uh, Bill Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Tony kind of has a reputation of a guy that's really hard to pass, especially in a crucial situation. Were you surprised at all when he got passed at turn seven? And, and what do you think would run in through his mind after that happened? No, I mean, I actually was surprised how long he kept the gap to the 11 and the 78 car. I mean, they're very, very competitive cars today. And, um, and track position for us, I think, helped our car a little bit. And then, of course, having a three-time champion that knew he had a, an opportunity today is, is a big thing. <laughs> um, you know, at, at the end of the day, we only won because of his desire and his drive and his want. You know, what I mean, and, and I, I truly believe that with these competitors and how good all the cars are and, and these top tier drivers, I mean, that's what it is. It's a matter of who wants it more at the end of the day in most cases. So uh, today, Tony wanted it more. Go ahead, Dominic. Domin Dominic, how to go on the racing experts.com for Mike. Can you walk us through that last lap and, and kind of maybe tell us what Tony was telling you over the radio or if you were verbal over the radio, especially over that last lap? I stayed pretty quiet. Um, you know, the spotter was keeping touch with him. He didn't say much either. You know, in those situations, I just I like to let him concentrate and let him do his thing. You know, he's got a lot going on, especially at a place like this. So we just let him focus. Any additional questions for uh, Gene or Mike? Jerry? Jerry Jordan, uh, Performance Racing Network, kicking the tires. When you did bring him in, uh, I heard you all on the radio, you were talking about, don't tell him until he gets to five. Uh, what was this, the strategy to that? Because you said, uh, like, half a lap earlier that you all were thinking about bringing him in, but what was the wait to wait so long until he got right, uh, right there to the end to make that decision? Um, just because I didn't know how many other people were listening to NASCAR at the time to see if they were hearing that they were talking about debris or not, so I kind of didn't want to give anybody an extra couple seconds to think about pitting with us or anything. So I wanted to wait till we were going down the S's there to, to let them know that we needed to come. Lee, we'll finish with Lee. Bob, you have something? Yeah, Absolutely. Go ahead. Bugger, can you just talk about what this means to win your first cup race as a crew chief? I mean, you know, to have that opportunity because, you know, you worked as a team engineer and, and such. And um, <coughs> this was no small task, what you were asked to do, first working with a couple of you know, other drivers until Tony could get back and just how, you know, what this sees and how it's unfolded and, and what it's meant to you to finally get to victory lane. Yeah, I mean, in, in some senses, uh, it really hasn't sunk in about being my first win, but, you know, I can't thank Gene, Tony, Greg Zipidelli, Brett Frude, all of them enough for the opportunity. You know, they believed in me. I've only worked at Stuart Haas now for, this is my third year, you know, two years with Kevin as his engineer. and. Everyone's sweet, you know, whether I'm a race engineer or crew chief or whatever, it, it's all great. But, uh, yeah, that part of it hasn't sunk in yet that it was my first. But, you know, our goal from the beginning of the year is to get Tony back in victory lane, and I'm just so glad that we can get him there. Finish up with Bob Pachris. Uh, Bob Pachris, ESPN for Gene again. I mean, I don't know if you heard Tony's comments from Friday where he said, you know, I want to race things that make me happy again. Um, how seriously should we take that and how happy – is he when you normally see him? Uh, you know, I, I think I think Tony's a, a really well balanced individual, and he doesn't seem to 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 get you know too excited either one way or the other. Um, I, you know, I'm sure if this could go on, if he could keep winning, he would want to keep racing. But um, you know, it's hard. It's a it's a hard sport. You, you know, you have um, almost 40 races a year, and uh, it takes a, a toll. I, I, I think he's looking to, to some new adventures. Uh, 
he told me he bought an airplane, a Cirrus airplane. He's going to become a, must become a little bit of a pilot. So, you know, I, I think it opens uh, doors uh, to do other things. And, and uh, Tony likes to do a lot of things, that's for sure. So I, I think we all know that. And whether it's, uh, you know, off-road racing and, 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 uh, or, you know, sprint cup racing, uh, he has, he has a, a lot of uh, hobbies to, uh, you know, occupy him. So I, I, I think that even though, you know, I certainly hate to see him go from uh, NASCAR, uh, you know, we have a great lineup for next year, and, and uh, uh, you know, I think Tony's going to be you know, like perfectly happy, you know, pursuing new uh, adventures. Well, Mike and Gene, congratulations on this big win, and uh, good luck the rest of this season. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. All right. That was exciting. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> Come on. We'll chew him up.